moment that we have left, we want to talk right down to earth in a language that everybody here can easily understand. And hello, everybody. Sorry for the delay there. Sean joining us as always do for OpenPaddock.net Radio Live. Joining me tonight, I have for the, and oh, by the way, by the way, just in case you are keeping score at home, this is the 151st episode, which means that we're going to bring the radio world into disrepute because that's <laughs> what we do. Because we don't give a shit. Joining me this week, I have Mike W. Say hello, Mike, to the world. Good evening, everyone. I'm bringing you this evening's Article 151C violation. That's me. Yeah, you're, well, I was going to say you're using Seagram's instead of Tangare or something, or Blue Coat. That is something of a violation, but dang, it's dirt cheap. <laughs> and there you have it, the violation. <laughs> Doug Patterson's on the show. That's violation one. And violation two is the fact that Mike is drinking shit. So that's that's what happens. Mike never drinks shit, but he is tonight. And it's okay. We'll allow it. We'll allow it just this time. So, uh, well, welcome, everybody. We kind of have a pretty packed show. We didn't have a race to cover, so we're not going to get too far into the weeds with the race. But we will go ahead and talk uh, about the news that we have this week and, you know, a little friendly banter and everything. I want to say special thank you to everybody that is in the chat room at the moment. So we've got uh, Nick, who is a long-time follower and friend, and also better than me at Formula One 2011 or 2012, whatever year we were playing. And uh, we also, ha we've, I mean, we got a lot of pe we got quite a few people in the chat room here. So thanks everybody for sticking with us and, and listening to the show. So, uh, boys, it is the 151st podcast, our what fourth, f fourth third, live show. I think it's third. I don't know. So. Yeah, well, I'm not keeping count, but I got the vodka and the sprite at the computer desk, so we will have some fun with this. Oh, fourth says the producer JD, um, and we'll also talk a little bit later about the race that we're going to have next week, where I kick JD's ass in I racing at Michigan International Speedway with the Indy car. But we'll get to that later because I don't want to ruin all my best stuff while I'm still quasi sober. So let's go ahead and talk about what we've got going on tonight. We've got a lot of stuff. We're going to talk about motorsports in brief. Then we're going to get into some IndyCar news. We have some news out there. And then obviously Doug will take us through the few bit of Mazda Road Indy topics that we have to discuss. So we will do that uh, all in due time. Uh, so... I guess we shall go ahead and start with the motorsports in brief. And we will talk briefly here uh, about the WRC. We'll start with the WRC as that is uh, obviously our second favorite series next to IndyCar, obviously. Uh, but we had a couple big topic pieces of news to, to discuss. And the first was being a promoter. We haven't had a promoter in the WRC pretty much all season. It is kind of kind of suck to be honest with you because we haven't we haven't had any but any like real organization to the championship the championships just kind of gone along sebastian Loeb's kicked everybody's ass as per the standard uh but we also had uh news that we may have a promoter and that is red bull uh but not red bull proper like you think of with the energy drinks but red bull being the red bull media house which is a a, a great um promoter on if you want my opinion uh they had a lot to do with the recent nitro circus 3d movie which if you've seen uh you saw that it was amazing video uh, in the theaters i went there to watch it in 3d sadly the six sad town that i live in there's uh, not a lot of people who appreciate the whole entire uh, nitro circus gig that's their loss but it was a fantastic movie uh, but that is what's going to happen is red bull is going to be there is set to be rather i don't think it's official yet uh 
but it looks like Red Bull is going to be the team of choice or the uh, promoter of choice for the WRC going forward. And guys, this is huge. This is huge news because when you look at it, Red Bull Media House does obviously a lot with the action sports genre. Obviously, WRC is probably the most action sport of the motorsports topics that we cover, and really probably any rally uh, any rally series is the most extreme sport of the motorsports, to that matter. And they are going to be looking to uh, take the WRC, kind of resurrect the WRC, and make it into a phenomenal, uh, a phenomenal product for everybody to 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 watch, enjoy. Uh, so, guys, what do you think? Do you do you like Red Bull as the new promoter for the WRC? I think it's hard to say yuck to that. I mean, it 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 it, it seems to be right in Red Bull's wheelhouse. I can I can just see them staging an air race over a live uh, rally stage. Oh, that'd, that'd be awesome. Be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Have the big pylon sticking up beside the uh, beside the stage. You know, every now and then a rally car cuts the corner too close and knocks one of them a little bit to the side. That'd be cool. Hmm. Doug, what do you think? Uh, I like it. You know, Red Bull has, uh, in addition to having the money, I think they have the experience to uh, to, to really pull this off and do it well. I. My my only concern is, I wonder if they don't turn it into. I I hope they don't circusify it. You know what yeah. I mean? I don't. Uh, I I hope they keep it. Uh, you know, straight proper stage rally, and don't get all gimmicky and funky with it. <laughs> I, don't, uh, I I don't. I like a little bit of the show, but you know, it, and and that's fine for uh, like Global Rally Cross or uh, or Nitro Circus, whatever. Uh, but you know, this is this is World Rally Championship. This is a uh, this is an old and it, it's a proper motorsports championship. It's mm -hmm. it's not uh, you know. It, <laughs> This isn't something where you're going to see Sideshow Bob at or some crazy thing like that. So I, I, I just hope they don't get too uh, circusy with it. I guess. Nice. Well, you're fired, Doug, because you've brought hate to the Red Bull Media House. <laughs> I do not bring <laughs> you know. hate. I did not bring hate. <laughs> no, I th I'm excited that, that they're picking this up because, like I said, I, they have the, both the money and the skill and experience to do this. Uh, it, but, you know, I can see... Uh, I can see some motivation from some to push us more towards a uh, a Extreme show um, genre. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, um, and, and, and I hope it doesn't go to that. And if you look at the Nitro Circus movie, which is the example I'm going to use because it's the clear cut, no shit definition I've seen from Red Bull Media House, they didn't really work to make it a circus because obviously it was a circus. Uh, that's what Nitro Circus is. But uh, but I I think what they did was it really. Um, it really did do a good job in just the videography and and some of the innovations they could present that way. Um, I th and I think that's what we need to really. Oh yeah, the videography. Uh, that's a good point. You yeah, know. and that's and really when you look at rally, you look at the Jim Jim Connors, you look at the. I mean, obviously Jim Connors is not a media house production, but you look at Jim Connors, you look at what they do for the X Games, and and. And not from the standpoint of, oh, this is awesome, or, oh, let's just try this, or, oh, let's make this a show. Just from the videography and, and the way they present the cameras and the way they present the action was by far, I thought anyways, a much better, uh, especially for Nitro Circus. It was just amazing the kind of video shots they were able to capture. And for the World Rally Championship, I think that's crucial uh, by getting those unique images. You know, don't make the championship a show or a sideshow, but if you want to have fun with the cameras or if you want to try innovative ways to, to capture the championship, and, and capture stage rally, I think that that I think that Red Bull uh, Media House is probably the best option. Uh, the other options were some random South African country uh, promoter, which nobody gives a shit about because we don't even rally there. And then the other one is a um, the other one was Euro, uh, Eurosport and Eurosport. Yeah, I don't 
I don't. I'm not keen on Eurosport being the promoter, uh, specifically because it's. Uh, well, they did work with the IRC. The the work with the IRC was good, but as a promoter, they failed the IRC, and I don't think that they're good enough for the promoter role uh, going forward. So, uh, but yeah, Red Bull Media House gonna probably be the promoter i don't know when it's supposed to go official uh but all indications at the moment point to them as the people who will be taking over and i'm excited for it and i can't wait honestly so uh roll on uh 2013 <laughs> so nice. let's talk about uh well let's talk one more thing for the wrc and that's toyota toyota has been mentioned so many times since <laughs> uh since well crap since the manufacturers started to kind of pour back in and especially since Toyota's left Formula One uh, they have been linked with Rally for a long time and it was broke this week that the WRC will be involved in the uh, or Toyota will be involved in the WRC but not to the degree that we thought yet uh, we're going to start with an entry level Toyota Yaris which in my opinion is a piece of shit but you know what? If it's another car, it's another car. What, who am I to judge? But the Toyota Yaris. Uh, <laughs> why has that never stopped you before? <laughs> hey, come on. <laughs> Only because I know that Mike Shaw will give me shit if I say it is. But uh, if we look at it, uh, the Toyota Yaris is going to be the, in the entry-level Yaris. will be ready in time for Germany. So Toyota is breaking ground with that. So it's going to be uh, it's going to be interesting to see uh, if you see a picture. The car doesn't look overly too bad. Kind of looks like a Fiat 500 uh, with ugly Toyota lights and ugly Toyota emblem. But it's another manufacturer, so I'm happy. Uh, but what the thing that I really want to talk about is the fact that the TMG Yaris R1A is what it's being called at the moment. But what Toyota is hoping is that they, they've already had a number of inquiries about the car and want to try to and people want to try to get their hands on a car. Uh, but at the end of the day, what we want to see from Toyota and the Yaris especially is that it is a gateway for Toyota to put a Yaris perhaps or a Corolla or whatever car they bring to uh, to WRC proper, and that would give us. Ford, Citroen, Mini to a certain extent, uh, Volkswagen, and potentially Toyota as all manufacturers, in my opinion, all manufacturers with a chance to win once Sebastian Loeb leaves. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I think it'll be awesome. I think they, uh, I think it'll be an awesome car, honestly. And I look forward to I look forward to seeing what it does, and I really hope it a lot of success right out of the gate. Because what I want from this is I want Toyota to take the Yaris and make it into a WRC Championship car, or or a Corolla for that matter, any car. I just want to see Toyota at the top level of rally, uh, bringing a product to the stages. Because aside from maybe the Nissan GTR, which they race in the GT Championship, as well as the obviously the Nissan or the uh, the I'm sorry. Holy shit. I just completely messed that up. Okay, so anyways, along with the Toyota that they have in the World Endurance Championship, I want to see them get to another World Championship. So I kind of crossed uh, my Toyotas and my Nissans there. My fault. Uh, but I want, to see, I want to see Toyota and the WRC at the top level combating with Ford, with Citroen, with Volkswagen, and with Mini. And I think it would be great for the championship. And, and great for Toyota because, honestly, you know, back in the day when they had the Celica GTR4, they made their mm. name in Rally, uh, and the car was phenomenal. So, you know, I'd love to see them come back to a certain degree into the, WR, into the WRC. Yeah, this is, this is going to be interesting. They are hoping to get it homologated by the end of the year. Obviously, this, uh, this effort this weekend or at Germany will be a, a, a zero car or basically a non-points car. They're just going out there as a demonstration run. But going forward, they're trying to get homologated and put into as an R1A car. Yeah, so. it's, it's much like uh, if you really look at the uh, if you look at the Fiesta R2, um, which is kind of a it's kind of like it looks very similar to the road going Fiesta. This is kind of what the Yaris is going to be, but it's not quite at the Fiesta's level. So it's going to be at a uh, R1 level, and then hopefully. Building upon that, they'll come out with a factory works team for the WRC. So I hope. So that's uh, that's what we need at the end of the day, and uh, you know, so I hope that we I hope that we get it. So, 
All right. Let's see. So we're, <laughs> we've got that. Now let's talk about Pikes Peak because we had Pikes Peak Hill Climb this weekend. Uh, it was an interesting event. It was already pushed back once because of the Wallow Canyon fire in Colorado that, you know, obviously wrecked Colorado and, and threatened the event. So they had to postpone it until uh, this past weekend. And Reese Millen wins the hill climb and breaks the 10-minute mark. However, it was on a pretty much full asphalt course. Mm. Um, and yeah, what I was going to say, I don't know that that I, – I mean, this really does start a whole new era, doesn't it? Uh, I think so. Okay. Yeah, I mean, here's the thing. Uh, two years ago when I was out at Pikes Peak uh, on a family vacation, they were in the stages of paving. So last year's event was held on a significantly more paved course, uh, but it was still about 30% um, thirty percent gravel. And, uh, and over here at Tajima last year beat the 10-minute mark for the first time. Yeah. So that was a, a great accomplishment. This year, Reese Millen beats it, but – it's on a full asphalt track. I was going to say, I think, and not to take away from Reese, I mean, it's, it's no, no, still no, 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 time. But, I mean, there, there does have to be that tiny little asterisk. Yeah, it's not it's not proper Pikes Peak. Now, we had a couple issues. Uh, Monster Tajima, who usually uh, dominates the event and destroys it, uh, honestly, he had a fire. He was driving an <laughs> all-electric car. Uh, which would be the first full kind of electric car to go up the oh, go up the uh, hill climb. It caught fire. He wasn't able to continue, so he was done. Uh, another issue we had was a lot of the machines uh, had some adverse weather, some rain, also some hail and snow at the very top of Pikes Peak that prevented them from getting a good run. And some of the stages at the end were actually uh, canceled because of the weather conditions. Um, there was actually, though, a massive crash that we saw. It's been probably viral on YouTube. I believe it was. Um, I can't. I can't. I can't remember exactly what his his whole name was, but he was in a he was in a Mitsubishi Evolution, and he went off. I posted on my uh, personal Facebook. Oh, so if uh, you're friends with me, uh, you can go to the Facebook and watch it. Jeremy, Corley, Jeremy, or Worley, something like that. Uh, Jeremy Foley. Foley, yes, Jeremy Foley. He went off in a Mitsubishi Evolution. He went off in the Devil's Playground area, and that was one of the most spectacular car accidents I've ever witnessed in my life. And they actually went and uh, they actually walked away from it. So <laughs> yeah, somehow they lived. This is a brutal, brutal. I mean, it, it's it's a exact. It was exactly what you would imagine when you make a mistake at uh, Pikes Pikes Peak. Sitting there rolling down a mountainside, right? Yeah, it was and bad. Rolling and rolling and rolling and it rolling. It made Yari Matty had nothing on <laughs> no. He, and <laughs> and the fact of the matter is, Yari Matty went off and he kind of rolled, 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 rolled down the side in Portugal. The fact of the matter is this: this guy fell about fifty feet before he impacted the top of his car onto the rocks. And I mean, it was just absolutely massive impact. I mean, I I thought I thought when I first seen it that he was dead. Uh, however, he walked away, and I then went and bought a roll cage produced by that company because that's, <laughs> un no that's kidding, unbelievable. <laughs> so, I mean, that was just um, it was an unbelievable accident. Uh, I'm so happy that they were okay, though. I wouldn't have, uh, I wouldn't have mentioned it uh, if it wouldn't have been for the fact that they were okay, but it was absolutely massive, uh, massive accident there. So, uh, but at the end of the day, it was... Reese Millen taking the top spot, uh, taking the top spot by, like Mike said, the 10. Oh, this stats page sucks. Yeah, I thought that was a better link. Sorry, yeah. guys. No, oh, no, it's not your fault. Uh, but re at the end of the day, uh, Reese Millen won uh, mega props to our to our friend to the website, uh, Brian Korn, who oh, actually yeah. took her car to Pikes Peak. She had an STI that she ran up Pikes Peak in the time attack class. Uh, did phenomenal job. Uh, she actually had a, uh, she actually had an axle snap uh, in the middle of practice, like last practice. She had an axle snap and had mm. somebody actually work to uh, re-weld the axle. So it was a good job by it was a good job by those folks to help her out, and a great job by Brienne. I mean, she, I mean, she truly is the quintessential definition of grassroots motorsport. And well. I love her for I, that. <laughs> I will. I will say that not only did she do a great job, she did good enough to make the Top Gear 
website. Yes, she was. Her, <laughs> they took a picture. Well, they took a picture that somebody else had taken and actually posted on the Top Gear uh, website. So yeah, that's a big deal. I, uh, you know, you've made it when, uh, when, uh, when you appear on uh, TopGear.com. <laughs> nice. I mean, Jeremy how many, Clarkson uh, is swearing somewhere. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, yeah, it was, a, it was a great event for her. I'm so happy. We need to try and get her on the show to talk about it, maybe next week. I, I know she's busy with some SCCA events, um, but I need to get a hold yeah, of her yeah, she's because... She's big into you know, the solo. Yeah, she's big into the solo. So maybe we can bring her out to Kansas City so that uh, we could go have dinner, and then we can have her on the show. What? What? Who said that? What? Doug? <laughs> yeah. You're married, Doug. It's, in, it's inappropriate. Hey, I didn't say that. <laughs> Yeah, I blame you. <laughs> so this year's this year's effort by uh, Nobuhiro Tajima, and he is the undisputed king of the mountain. Oh yeah, um, he wasn't in the uh, Suzuki this year. He was in his own creation, uh, very interesting looking carbon fiber single cell. Yeah, very very interesting. Um, had some GoPro sponsorship, so there's a GoPro strapped to the front of the car. But uh, unfortunately, his car caught fire in the first leg, so <laughs> he set no time. But there were several electric cars there this year that did finish. So it's it's kind of interesting to see that development at Pikes Peak because you've got everything from the old traditional open wheel cars that are going up there, you know, funky looking modified indie cars, oh, all the yeah, way down the, the line to the, to run. yeah, and that that's still a class and they're still ran there, um, all the way down the line to the quads and the uh, motorcycles and the um, big rigs, <laughs> everything that's across amazing. the board. You know, running the semis up there, that's. Yeah, this Go year's event. Letters. You know, this year's event. After they went ahead and paved the whole thing, you know, some people, um, especially Reese Millen's dad, he came out and said, it, you know, it's going to run the event. People aren't going to be interested in it anymore now that it's all paved. Well, this year's entry list had well over 160 some competitors, yeah. and it's the biggest they've ever had. <laughs> They're like, oh, we don't have to race on dirt. Game well, on. <laughs> see, it, it, it takes a bit of that setup challenge away because you used to have to have a car that could do well on the asphalt, but it had to be, you know, a, a high enough clearance to get over, you know, get over all the dirt sections and everything like that. And now, you know, you don't have that as much of a setup challenge. Don't get me wrong. It's not like you're driving on, on, on a baby's bottom tarmac all the way to the top. This is still a difficult course it's still not you know like a a flat pancake piece of asphalt all the way up still a lot of difficulty and still a lot of bad tarmac that you're driving on but it's all tarmac all the way up so it gives you that grip that you otherwise wouldn't have so all right well that's enough for rally it was good uh it was good while it lasted uh i love pike's peak as always one mm. of my favorite events on the calendar want, want to go I know we need to go next year. Maybe, Definitely maybe on the bucket list. Well, now, well, now that we've got J, now that we got John, JD, and the boys, I think we can start to open up some possibilities of mm. broadcasting from events. So something that we'll have to keep in mind. Maybe go to Pikes Peak next year uh, and see what we can. Maybe we can cause some havoc in Pikes Peak because I'll be back just in time and I'll have a little bit of money in the pocket. So I definitely would like to go. Mm. Uh, okay, so let's go ahead and talk about Formula One. We had some interesting news. Martin Whitmarsh says the VX, the V6 rather, and the not VX, uh, the V6 and the V8 equivalency formulas should not be allowed. Um, mm. Which I really don't give a shit because Martin Whitmarsh isn't going to be the photo president anymore because he's I was quitting. going to ask about that. He's quitting, uh, but he says that uh, he says that retaining the current V8 engines alongside the 2014 V6 turbos. Uh, will not be, hmm. will be quote unquote unattractive option yeah. for the sport. Are you serious? Was it unattractive in like the freaking eighties when people ran different kinds of engines? No. Well, it, <laughs> here's what he's getting at. He did not like the idea that they went from you know when they went from tens to eights, and some people were allowed to run eights for another year. Mm. Or excuse me, we're allowed to run tens for an additional year. Um, there was a year of grandfathering, and some of the lower teams didn't move to eights until after that year was up. And some people claim that they got a performance benefit from staying with the eights. 
Oh, yeah, because Toro Rosso is just setting the effing world on fire. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, let me tell you, Martin Whitmarsh, you're a dumbass. Well, I, you know, I, I have nothing, no real opinion on this. This is the way F1's going. They're going to these V6s, they're going to entirely different regulations. I can understand everybody. Uh, or you know, at least the top tier teams who have to make the investment to develop these engines, saying we want everybody running these engines because there's only going to be three of them out there anyway. They want everybody on it, and it makes sense. Well, yeah, I mean, if you want everybody to run the engine, I understand from their standpoint, but they're not looking at it from the like HRT standpoint, where well, money doesn't grow on trees. Like HRT is just going to buy it like everybody else and the <laughs> FIA, the FIA is going to tell them that they have to be able to uh, provide the same engine to those teams for a fixed price I mean just yeah. like they did with the current spec so uh, well they're only I, they're only looking at like three I think an article just came out recently said they're only looking at three manufacturers anyways yeah. and that's yeah. uh, that's Mercedes rather uh, Renault and uh, Ferrari. Ferrari. And one of the interesting points that was brought up by Mercedes is that Mercedes is like, hey, we don't want to commit to the uh, we don't want to commit to the new Concord agreement because we can't guarantee you that AMG uh, Mercedes AMG is going to be around much longer. They're talking in 2014 that they're only going to be a team called AMG Merce uh, AMG F1, and that is to put Michael Schumacher in the car. That's it. Hmm. That's it. <laughs> they're not even going to be a factory effort. It's just going to be AMG. F1, and that's it. And that's uh, per Autosport this morning when Ooh. I did my usual Autosport sweep in the morning to see if anything cool was happening. Uh, I was, I was uh, actually, uh, that was actually brought to my attention, is that they're like, yeah, we're probably not going to be able to run a full team, but we'll run Schumacher. Oh, Nico who? Yeah. Nah, never mind that guy. So... Well, this doesn't deserve much talk, but the Greek government says that they're interested in running a uh, F1 race outside of Athens, and I'm not quite sure how they're going to fund that. I guess they could always print a bunch of euros to do that, but that seems to be an issue in the uh, euro block these days. So chances that this is going to happen, guys. What's that? The V6s a and the V8s? No, no, no. Oh, no, no. Are a we talking uh, about the Greek Grand Prix? Yes. Oh, that's not going to happen. Are you kidding me? <laughs> the Greek I, government gives backing to the Paris Grand Prix with what money? Yeah, You're broke. I, <laughs> in the end, yes. Okay, you can develop. 55-gallon drum of olive oil. Oh, yeah. that's awesome. I'll get that from the Italians. <laughs> it's better, thanks. <laughs> yeah, they're saying that it will help tourism, which will help the economy, and that may be entirely true. Uh, because the Greek economy is suffering and there's a lot of tourism that isn't coming there anymore because the economy is crap. So who knows? But let's just say signs point to no. And moving on to the European Le Mans series, uh, <laughs> they have confirmed that about seven entries from the European Le Mans series are going to attend Petit Le Mans. We talked about how the ELMS had already axed their final two races of the season due to lack of competitor interest. Um, seven of their remaining 14 entries uh, have chosen to go to Petit. So, very cool. I, yeah. I really hope they have a, a good experience at Petit. Oh, and, uh, Thank and you, see. Ambassador of Tourism. We really <laughs> needed your seal of approval. <laughs> <laughs> well, now, hang on. Crap. <laughs> <laughs> hey, young little punk. <laughs> <laughs> you damn right. <laughs> so no, I I hope they enjoy their the experience at, at, at Petit. I hope they find the competition um, good and uh, and worthwhile because I'd love to see some of these uh, teams come over to the ALMS <laughs> next season. What teams? I don't. Well, any teams. I mean. It, ALMS is the, the, the GT is the, the GT field is uh, is strong and robust uh, in ALMS right now, but the the prototype field could really use some help. And with ELMS uh, gone, it, it'd be nice to see some of those teams uh, come here, see that the series is good, run well, well organized, and decide, hey, you know, instead of just closing up shop, let's go over there. Yeah. They need to develop the factory interest in both the LMS and in ALMS in the prototype categories. Right now, you've got you've got manufacturer interest in the uh, GT categories, but not in the LMPs. And nobody and, cares because the money to be made is in the WEC. Yeah, so it it 
it's it's kind of one of these things where the ACO shot themselves in the foot. They had a good thing going with the uh, the European Le Mans series. They had a decent thing going with the ALMS. They had nothing going with the Asian Le Mans series. Ha ha. Mm. And uh, you're so funny. Yeah. Ha ha. Um, but it, they kind of shot themselves in the foot because they got in bed with the FIA. They had already started their you know, their, their endurance championship to begin with and then got in bed with the FIA. Um, it just, it, it made it difficult for these manufacturers to go anywhere else other than the WEC. So yeah. kind of rough. Yeah. Kinda rough. It's, it's one of those things. Uh, we'll definitely have to keep our eye on it and, uh, hope that something materializes because it's just been, it's been awful for the ELMS. And honestly, from a proto standpoint, it's been awful from the ALMS. I mean, we've had great, we haven't had good competition in the P1. Uh, I'd like to see more P2 teams challenge uh, Level 5 as well as Conquest Endurance. Uh, I think that what Level 5 has at the moment, as well as Conquest, to a, to a I want to say an equal degree because their budget is not as robust as Level 5. As you remember, we've had Martin Plowman, friend of the website, uh, on the show, on the podcast before, and he's like, you know, Level 5 Motorsport is like, a Formula One operation. They spend more money in their operation than than Roger Penske does in Penske Racing for IndyCar. Uh, so you know, level five is huge. Conquest Endurance not so huge, but running with them on a consistent basis. Bring more LMP twos, if nothing else, uh, to the fight uh, from ELMS. Yeah, granted, you see, that's what I'm saying. And granted, it does kind of stink because the no, Doug, you're pitching them as a ministry of tourism. And if that's the job you want, I'll give it to you. But <laughs> you're okay, like, I hope, they enjoy, I hope they enjoy the experience and I hope that they come back for more. Gentlemen, we let will me bring this conversation <laughs> into perspective. This is the EL, ELMS and the ALMS. While we're interested in them, we're more interested in IndyCar. So let's move on to IndyCar. Uh, well, before we... <laughs> Before we move on to IndyCar, uh, again, we should give proper thanks to uh, John Wessling, J.D. Webb for the broadcast tonight via ETV Live. You, we're here live on the ETV website, etvtacheplay.net, and you can also find us on, uh, on the ETV Live radio. They have ETV Live radio, so we're streaming out to everybody's mobile devices, uh, having a good time with that. Um, so, you know, good stuff for sure and uh, I appreciate it as always honestly uh, for having us on um, so Mike as you said let's move on to IndyCar because we're, we have 27 minutes left so we're, we're pushing the bounds of time um, but uh, let's talk about the 2013 schedule for IndyCar series uh, right now we, we've got quite a few quite a few things on the, on the plate here we've got obviously Houston is going to fall in somewhere uh, some saying that it's going to be at the end of the year as the season finale. Uh, and then we, we have news that Michigan International Speedway, also Pocono, are in play for 2013. Uh, and then a new place in New Orleans that Randy Bernard has been hinting about on the Twitter. Uh, a lot of people have not taken uh, kindly to it. But it looks like there's a track just outside New Orleans, a road course. Uh, NOLA Motorsports Park is what it's called. And that apparently is on Randy Bernard's radar. Yeah, article came out uh, through Kurt Cavan this weekend talking about it. So it's the first press we've seen about it other than the Twitter sphere. New Orleans Motorsports Park is a very unique <laughs> track. It's uh, it's a crisscrossed landmine of uh, asphalt that they can configure. Its longest configuration is about five and a half miles, and they can configure it any way they want. With um, uh, just you could do racing on two separate tracks at the same time the way they've got it configured or you know laid out. So. Being able to come out with an IndyCar track layout there, would they run the whole five and a half miles? No. <laughs> Boo. Well, why not? Because you have to have uh, cords long enough to do all the cameras, and you have to have the turn workers, and you have to have the track marshals, and you have to have well, people look in at each what, corner. Look at what uh, ALMS is doing at VIR. They're doing the grand course for the first time ever in competition. 
I, oh, that's that's great. But it's going to be a tw- actually doesn't have a television presence presence, and IndyCar does. Oh, good point. I mean, Touché. you know, <laughs> we were out at we were out at Mid Ohio last weekend, and you know, when I was looking through kind of people talking about the ALMS coverage out there, granted it's Hindoff and they they do a great job, but it was woefully lacking on television from everything that people were saying about it. And if they can't do a good job at a at a, a fairly small track, try and do it on five and a half miles, and ugh, that's going to be ridiculous. I mean, just think, to adequately cover a five and a half mile track, would they have enough television cameras? Would they have enough uh, you know, television personalities to cover the corners and, and all that kind of stuff? Well, what, you know, they need to but, hire me. With vodka in hand, I'll cover the corners. Ah, whatever, Sean. <laughs> <laughs> I will! I do a good job. So, would they do the five-and-a-half-mile layout? You know, it, it's already come up in conversation that the three-and-a-half-mile layout at Road America, Road, yeah, Road America, would be challenging. Five-and-a-half miles would be really challenging. So, hmm. <sighs> Eh, most of it's straight. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, seriously. I mean, I'm looking at this, and no, I, I, I don't think it's it would be as challenging as uh, as you're thinking logistically. Uh, I think they could pull off the uh, the full circuit, but I mean, ultimately, it's it's uh, it's immaterial. Uh, whatever they uh, they choose it really does look like a a fine facility uh unfortunately i i'm not seeing any uh any photos of the uh you know any wide photos is, is there much elevation change to this i mean all yeah, i all i, I can get is a uh, top it. down it's louisiana it's, yeah, well, it's that's what i was thinking is crying out it, loud <laughs> <laughs> if you're nice. lucky it's it's sea level let's hope there's no hurricanes uh, well <laughs> and you know Ooh, see? That, you know that's your because it would this... be oh wait they're they're wanting to do this in in february though as mm-hmm. a season opener uh and so that gets us out of the hurricane season a little bit can we at least make sure that ray negat is not a is there is that there? Nice. Yeah, they're talking about. We don't want a chocolate IndyCar race. They're they're ch- they're talking about um, promoting this through the Super Bowl, which will be held in New Orleans this year. I don't know exactly how that promotional tie-in happens. Maybe you just litter New Orleans with ticket? you know. <laughs> nice. Yeah, I, I I don't know. You know, throw a bunch of Indy cars painted in NFL colors uh, across New Orleans. That's been tried, I think. Um, <laughs> In Indianapolis, by the way, uh, um, but uh, I, I don't know, man. I, I, I mean, I'm excited about the possibility of having another road course on the schedule. This road course, though, just opened this year. They're doing some sort of AMA bike race coming up shortly, and they're having to bring in temporary grandstands. So, nice. if they're doing IndyCar, it's going to be temporary grandstands as well. Um, is that a huge problem? Well, you go to Mid Ohio and there are hardly any grandstands, and the grandstands that are there, you know, most people would rather sit in their lawn chair. So is that a problem? I had a grandstand ticket, and I'm, yeah, I'm looking yeah. at the grandstand. And I'm thinking, why? As I'm sitting in my comfy lawn chair. Wow. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So is that a problem? No, it, it's not a problem. I mean, how many grandstand seats do they have? A barber, not I was many. Say again, barber, you know, same. Yeah. Same so, thing. Throw out your uh, your tarp and and your lawn chairs and your golden. Yeah. yeah. So, is this going to happen? Well, signs point to who knows. Um, a lot of things. I, I hate to be this way. Randy Bernard has a pretty good track record of talking a lot and not producing as much as he's talked about. Uh-huh. So, let's just wait. All right, and waiting. We're going to go ahead and move into what can only be described as a night in the life of me. <laughs> Only I don't pee on women because I try to bring them home, so I can't pee on them or it would be inappropriate. But Jay Pinsky, on the other hand, he loves peeing on people. Uh, Jay, Pinsky, <laughs> God. Jay Pinsky, on the other hand, pees on anybody. Uh, as he was arrested uh, for yeah for, for uh, him and, uh, and a friend. Was it a friend? Mm-hmm. Yeah, having a it friend. At the time. Yeah, right. I guess so. We're trying to break in the Nantucket Yacht <laughs> Club. Sounds like a scene right out of Family Guy. 
Uh, and they were arrested, and apparently Jay Pinsky shoved a woman who discovered them, and, <laughs> and I would read it right out of the Inquirer and Mirror and, and Puckett's newspaper. It says that the report claims that Pinsky brothers, oh, I guess they were brothers, were urinating in the parking lot, and that when one of the women confronted Jay Pinsky, he turned and continued to urinate on her boots. <laughs> What the hell is this? Jay Pinsky. I know, it's like part. straight out of a cheesy 80s movie, isn't it? He is a team owner and he peed on somebody. <laughs> he's like at. And then this, ran to a house to try and hide from the cops. I know, he's like an R. Kelly. He is like <laughs> R. Kelly status. Can, can, can JD and John Wesley oh, wow. uh, cue the I'm going to piss on you theme song? Oh, jeez, please <laughs> stop that. Because <laughs> that's uh, the kid. He peed on somebody after breaking into their house or into the yacht club. Who the hell does that? Yeah. I don't even do that. I at least try to bring him home, Jay Pinsky. What's your problem? See, I'm not even going to use his last name, Pinsky. I'm just going to call him JP. He, he's, he has <laughs> disgraced the family at an absolute level high. I mean, crying out loud. I mean, yeah, I mean. Face. Nobody really. Why. <laughs> this Jay Pinsky has uh, he has uh, apported himself as basically frat boy weekend party uh, as a team owner in the IndyCar series. So where does this go? It's going to be bad. Yeah, um, I was going to say oh, True Car cannot yeah. <laughs> be happy about this. You peed. They absolutely can't be happy. We sponsor okay. you and you peed at a woman. Well, more, true, more so exactly. Yes. True Car. True Car who sponsors. <laughs> Halls of Motorsport, Cars and World Challenge uh, at, uh, at Rally at Mid America. Ohio, Rally America. You got True Car all over the place putting women drivers into cars, and Jay Pinsky goes and pees on a woman, <laughs> and he's a team owner for a team that has True Car sponsoring I think they'll have their driver. <laughs> I'm gonna no. So uh, no. <laughs> yeah. Science said no. That's awesome. They're, well they're done, going, Jay they're Pinsky. They're going to Sarah Fisher's team, I think. <laughs> yeah, right? Uh, yeah, we don't have to worry about her urinating on potential clientele. No, I always thought that clientele. was really the proper place for that sponsorship. With somebody who pees on women? No, 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 no. For, no. Uh, uh, Sarah Fisher. Yeah. I well, thought that you know, having, uh, having Catherine Legg uh, over at uh, Sarah Fisher with the True Car sponsorship, I think that that's that is a perfect fit. It's a yep. perfect fit. So, yeah. Sarah, we're already pushing for your new sponsorship package for next year. Exciting, huh? J P J P. That's just Steven that's Steve. just sad. I don't understand how. <laughs> yeah, we're I'm having just... all kinds of fun with the <laughs> with the variations of this here in the chat room. Oh my yes, it's it's getting out of control. Uh, well, let's move on. I don't want to give t I don't want to give Jay Pinsky and his wild urinating adventures too much time on the air. Uh, but let's talk about James Hinchcliffe. He was on Wind Tunnel. Great move for any car as they continue to push young Hinchcliffe uh, mm. as their kind of you know big star for the future. Uh, so he was on there, and he did actually a Kimi Raikkonen impression that was damn impressive, <laughs> better than anything I could have ever thought of bringing to the table. Uh, great work by uh, James Hinchcliffe on Wind Tunnel and phenomenal impression. Mad props to Hinch for that because, yeah, that was freaking unbelievable. Yeah, and it's kind of cute how he uh, he uh, came out as the host of the show and introduced their guest, Dave Despain. Uh, <laughs> that, that's that's kind of a carryover to all the the mayor of Hinchtown videos he's done, where like he he basically took the spot of the mayor of Terre Haute and was sitting at the mayor of Terre Haute's desk, and the mayor comes in, who the mayor of Terre Haute happens to be a close personal friend of mine, so that was kind of funny oh. to me, you know. Nice, you're friends anyway. with the mayor of Terre Haute. So yeah, well, you know, you can hook it, us up with a tax break when we stop there for gas on our way through, please. Come Christmas time. <laughs> he's not that powerful. Oh. <laughs> hey, not worth the ask. Anyway, worth the yeah. Well, let's go ahead and move on. Um, well, unless you guys have anything else to say about uh, no, Hitch. not really. I just thought it was worthwhile mentioning because he did a very good job. 
Yes, he did a great job. Uh, looking, at, let's go ahead and move on to California. Uh, Fontana has a three-year title ship with MA, what I will now call Mav TV. Uh, apparently, they're a cable channel. I don't know who they are. Yeah, um, they're probably just as well known as Versus, right? Uh, if I think Versus has got a little bit more clout than that. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I got on their website just to see what they were, and they they said they're real American television. Oh. And yeah, you know, they had a, a bunch of copycat shows of, you know, auction stuff and hunting and, you know, the the, the whole, <laughs> the whole uh, you know, what, Discover Network, Discovery Network and all that, where they go out and do their, their little Ooh. ice road truckers shows and stuff Bird like dog that. Dog Circuit. Nice. So yeah, um, Mav TV. No, I'm serious. They have, they have a show, Bird Dog Circuit. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Anyway, so very cool. <laughs> they they have a title sponsor. That's more than most events can say. So that's great. Indeed. Well, it's be- yeah, it is well, better yeah. than most. Yeah, JD. I, I, I JD, our any- producer, just chimed in. Says he lives in LA and he's never heard of this channel. So you live uh, in LA, JD. That explains everything. Nice. But uh, I, you know, suppose yeah. supposedly Dish Network, uh, my Dish Network package here in Ohio, is capable of picking up this channel. I'll have to check and see if I get it just to see what it is. But uh, you know, anyway. Like I said, probably just about as well known as Versus, so you know. <laughs> well, you know, this three this three year deal. Um, I mean, there are contracts that at we least all it's know. not a ten year deal. Well, we all know uh, contracts are written on pe- in pencil. Such right? a bad idea. <laughs> but <laughs> Fontana is notorious, even in, in NASCAR, for drawing just tens of people. Yeah. You know, and. Man, I I really wonder if uh, if this year and maybe they pull the trigger again next year, but do they do a third, uh, or if this year is just so abysmal? If we only get fifteen thousand, you know, do they have an out in their contract? Say, <laughs> oh no, no, this this just is not worth it. Or are they, you know, maybe they got a price that was good enough for them to see this completely. As a uh, as a hospitality opportunity, yeah. I don't, you but, wonder, uh, wonder about that. You wonder if they're paying anywhere close to a full sanctioning fee for this event, anywhere close to one and a half million, which seems in the past has been the going rate for IndyCar events. But I think that it's been cheapened a bit this year. Yeah, and you know the they keep talking about how important the uh, TV numbers and what did a uh, Mid Ohio pull a point six. A point six. Granted, it was up against NASCAR rain delay, but, but also. On ABC. Up, but it was also up against the Olympics, which is just that's bad. But it's still point six. Every you know the the sad thing is is every time we talk about the IndyCar ratings on television, we go well, but it was up against da 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 da. Okay, it's always going to be up against something. So just shut up about it. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, <Okay. laughs> no. I, I you see this on message boards. You see it on, you know, descriptions of the event in the in the uh, Indianapolis Star and all that kind of stuff. But it was up against da 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 da. So what? You have to be an event that can stand on your own. Yeah, you don't want to go up against the freaking World Series if you can avoid it, or you know the uh, <laughs> NFL games if you can avoid it, because you know they are the most profitable form of sport on the planet right now. But true. But. If you can't stand on your own, if you can't develop a niche audience that follows you, you know, what's it all worth? Sorry, guys. I guess I'm down on IndyCar again this week. Oh, my. Well, we'll have to fix that. Uh, well, let's fix it by talking about silly season. we got some silly season rumors afoot. Uh, names I'm going to mention. Rubens Barrichello. Kind mm. of a surprise. Graham Rahal. Not really surprised because he's a whiny asshole. And Briscoe, who should have been fired years ago. So oh. I think the one that's the most surprising on the list, obviously Rubens Barrichello, as it seems as though he was pretty fit and steady in the old uh, KV Chevrolet outfit. But he's not a big fan 
Uh, he wants to move on. There has been some talk of him discussing things that uh, are have to do with Honda, I guess. Uh, so, yeah, it, Rubens. Rubens. You know, we talked about this last week. How it was reported that he was considering moving away from KV. He's just not been happy with the development of the car and uh, would like to go to an. Yeah, like to go to another team that's more developed. But you know, if he's not going to Penske or Ganassi or Andretti, why would he consider moving from KV? Who knows? Uh, well, teams that are on the uh, on the hunt on the hunt, yes, are obviously uh, Ray Hall, Letterman, Lanning. Maybe, uh, maybe is one of them. Yeah. Uh, also, uh, I think. Uh, now he had talked with some of the guys, uh, talked with some of the guys over at uh, Ganassi for the fourth car, but they haven't officially talked about the deal, uh, a mm -hmm. deal going down. And then also, um, oh, who was the other one? Uh, the other uh, uh, Honda Herda. team, Herda, Herda, yeah, Schmidt, Schmidt. Was oh yeah, Herda team, Schmidt. Yeah. Whatever. I'm getting so, the two yeah. mixed up right now. But uh, so yeah, there's some potentials out there. Where does he end up? Does he even end up in IndyCar? We don't know, but it's interesting to see the Barrichello is on the market. It's interesting to see that Ray Hall's seat is open, and potentially Ray Hall won't be back there. Potentially, he's going to be with his dad next year. Um, and you can't help but mention Briscoe. Is he going to be back with Roger? If I had to guess, I'd say yes, but there's always a potential that Roger's sick of him losing so, mm -hmm. you know, um, the other thing that needs to be pointed out is that Ryan Hunter Ray doesn't have a contract for Andretti next year. Does that get done? Most likely it does. But if there's a seat at Ganassi or there's a seat at Penske, he has to be in the discussion. Well, yes. if, if there's an open seat on the Ganassi uh, varsity squad, yes. If it's a seat at the JV squad, yeah, you know, okay, maybe <laughs> you use it as as uh, negotiating leverage, but I I can't see that you you seriously put that type of ride up above your ride at uh, Andretti Autosport. I tend to agree with you, Doug, for the first time in history. <laughs> well, no way. This is two weeks in a row we've agreed. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> I well, yeah, I'll agree with you um, because I think that uh, yeah, I don't, I don't think Hunter Ray uh, settles at a JV Ganassi squad. Honestly, no, I, I can't see it. If he's going to move, it's got to be a move up. Yeah, and the only other move up, really, in my opinion, is either going to be at Andretti, maybe. Well, I mean, not Andretti. I'm sorry. He's at Andretti. Staying with Andretti is a move, is a is a safe move, or a yeah. Penske slash Ganassi varsity yeah. squad, and that's, and unless Roger Penske fires Briscoe and hires him, that's not going to happen because we already know that Penske's interested in Joseph Newgarden. Mm. So, but not I, for this silly season. The next, obviously. Yeah, I would think Newgarden to Penske is just. Not going to happen, certainly, this year. Supposedly, well, Newgarden isn't in at Sarah Fisher for, yet for next year, but that's probably his safest bet for next year. Well, and he's he's been really good with that team. And, and uh, oh, someone in the uh, in the chat mentioned this. I, I think it was Nick uh, that, uh, that it mentioned that uh, Newgarden and Leg next year at, uh, at Sarah Fisher would be a Dynamite pairing, absolute mm -hmm. dynamite pairing. I'll take that. And so, but you know, the the year after, it, um, it, New Garden is the uh, is the what you typically think of when you think of a Roger Penske. Uh, when you think of a Roger Penske driver, although you know, I must admit, it, here as of late. Uh, his drivers and those around him have not really uh, lived up to that uh, that kind of squeaky clean, you know, the, yeah, the Rick image. Mears type of uh, of image, where you have Elio <laughs> fighting uh, tax dodging allegations and, uh, and Will Power <laughs> nice. you know, giving the double middles <laughs> to uh, race control. Deserved, well, 
deserved. Uh, and then having his own son sit there and <laughs> be on the scout boots. I mean, uh, <laughs> what is happening to the Penske reputation? Not not making daddy proud there, son. No, no. But, uh, you know, it, um, the, uh, the, the – the only thing that could be worse if is if uh, if one of his drivers headbutted their wives over the weekend over a dispute about a box nice. of condoms. Oh lord! <laughs> oh my! Anyways, <laughs> moving on. That one did you? <laughs> moving on. <laughs> after after they changed their name once again. Sorry. It's yeah. just is it is it too soon? Uh, anyway. All right. So, anything else for IndyCar? Uh, that's all for IndyCar. So, you have two seconds to do Mazda and Indy because I have other plugs I have to do. So, be brief. Okay. Well, there really isn't much. Uh, first of all, Zach Beach got a uh, an, an opportunity to test a Firestone Indy Lights car. Um, uh, that happened yesterday at Putnam Park Raceway there outside of, uh, of Indianapolis. Um, you know, they're... They're really impressed with uh, with Zach on the uh, on the track. He's uh, he's a he's a very good driver. He's he's not been a podium regular, although he has been on the podium uh, a few times. Uh, but off the track, he is a uh, he is a perfect professional. He's exactly the type of uh, of person you want uh, promoting your product. Uh, out there on the on the track and and off the track, so uh, it, it won't surprise me at all to see him uh, up in uh, in Indy Lights. Maybe not next year, uh, but if not next year, then certainly the year after. Um, but uh, you know, it, honestly, it wouldn't surprise me to see him and Zach, or I'm sorry, him and Sage, uh, both move up to uh, to Indy Lights next year. They, they seem to work really, really well together as uh, as teammates so we'll see where that goes but uh good on him for getting the test uh that's uh that's pretty darn cool uh <clears throat> the uh the other weird uh, this is really biz- well i guess it shouldn't come up, come as too much of a surprise uh it, we've talked about the fact that the for 2014 they're going to have a new indy lights chassis uh the current one's been in service since 2002 and is showing its age and it, well, because of that, teams like uh, uh, teams like Sam Schmidt, who have good resources, uh, but also have the the skilled engineers, and they've been rubbing on these cars for well ever. Uh, they have found all the speed, and teams just now coming to the series like uh, Hunkos Racing, uh, you know that they're they've got a decade's worth of engineering data to catch up on, uh, and they they find it tough. But the uh, amongst the amongst the people bidding or vying for the uh, for this chassis contract is Delta Wing. And okay, I honestly I shouldn't be surprised. I, I think uh, I think that group is looking for any place they can to uh, to market this car and this uh, this philosophy. I really do think it definitely belongs in sports car. I think it was perfect at Le Mans. Mm. Uh, it, it definitely is not a fit for the Indy Lights chassis. Um, th- there's a few reasons why. The same reasons why it, it didn't fit for the, uh, for the Indy car chassis. It's not an open wheel car. I don't, I don't care if you make the little cutouts on top. It's not an open wheel car. Forget about it. Uh, it is a sport car. Uh, extreme prototype type of sports car. Uh, but two, one of the things they, they say they wanted to do with this new chassis, excuse me, is to uh, make sure that it has a lot of the, the same characteristics, same driving characteristics and dynamics as the larger cars. So they can properly serve as a learning platform for these up and coming drivers. If you pick the Delta Wing, no, it is not going to have the same dynamic. Yeah. It's going to be a completely different type of car requiring a completely different type of driving style. And so, you know, this was thrown out there and a lot of buzz has been made about it, but uh, 
no, forget about it. It's uh, they're pissing in the wind. Uh, Delta Wing is not going to be selected for Indie Lights. Uh, yeah, I, I'll say that right now. You are the weakest link. The yeah, only way fun. that makes sense is if they envision a future of IndyCar going to Delta Wing, and they need data. Yeah. Yes. Uh, and, and and uh, even Brian well, Barnhart. Said, yeah, Brian Barnhart even said that when they kind of rejected the Delta Wing bid. They said, you know, we don't have enough data. We can't even make an informed decision on this car. So it's not even in the consideration. Hmm. And then he went on to say maybe if it came in as a feeder series chassis, then it would have a chance. Well, that's exactly what they're at least bidding. So like you said, though, Doug, I, don't, I, I, don't, I do not think this has a chance, um, especially when you've got entries from Swift, and Swift is everybody's darling. Well, and keep in mind that uh, Swift also made the Formula Atlantic chassis. Uh, before mm -hmm. it went Tango Uniform, what was that? Uh, uh, 2010, I believe, is uh, is when it went out. Yeah, I think so. Um, but anyway, that was a really, really fine chassis. Um, I <clears throat> I got to see them run. Uh, I think it was 2009 uh, when they were at Mid Ohio, uh, running with uh, LMS and the. Uh, and the uh, uh, Indy cars, and it was a, it was a sexy looking car. It was fast. It was uh, it, it was a perfect little feeder car. Um, so I I really 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 hope uh, that Swift is able to take that uh, that Atlantic's chassis, maybe update it, modernize it, and uh, and put that out. Uh, Delara also has a uh, a lot of experience in making feeder series chassis. Because uh, don't they make the GP2 car? I believe you're correct. I think they do. Uh, Peanut Gallery, feel free to chime in and correct me if I'm wrong here. I think uh, they've already signed off. Uh, <laughs> 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 you heard Monster Red Indian, it's like, yep, I'm out of here. Uh, but anyway, so... It, they have a lot of experience, and of course, they're the ones that created the uh, uh, that are that have built the uh, the current Indy Lights chassis. Uh, so they have a lot of experience with this. Uh, my Gale, I I don't know. Uh, I I really do think it's between Delara and Swift, with the edge going to Delara, given the relationship that Delara already has with the series. Be that good or bad, uh, you know, we can talk about. Uh, the politics of all that, uh, you know, some other time because uh, I'm already three minutes over. But uh, anyway, it is what it is. Um, Delara has IndyCar in its in its hip pocket, uh, so I think they're the favorite. Swift uh, could, I think Swift can uh, can put forward a a strong contender, uh, but it's really going to have to be something uh, outstanding to uh, beat the. Uh, the political advantage that Delara has. Thoughts? I think you're right. I think you're right. I mean, yeah. the IndyCar series has shown that they love Delara, and Delara built them a fancy little building in Indianapolis where they're currently manufacturing about 30% of the car, and at some point it's going to be 100% of the current IndyCar chassis. So you got to know that that, Building that building is going to have long-term benefits, not just in the IndyCar series. It's also going to have it in Indy Lights. So I would say Delara is going to be hard to beat. You know, another uh, another thing that we'll have to start thinking of uh, here, the not too distant future, start uh, start discussion on is the new Star Mazda um, chassis. Right now, it's been well, it's always been uh, a Star chassis from Star Cars. Uh, they're looking at upgrading their chassis. Maybe they stick with Star, probably will stick with Star, uh, but I think they'd be remiss if they didn't also take bids from uh, from people like Swift uh, or Store. Uh, I think they could put together a, a nice little package. Um, but anyway, uh, moving on, the only, the only stuff we have happening next week... Uh, Indy Lights is off until Baltimore. Uh, Star Mazda 
is uh, is also off until Baltimore. Uh, the the USF two thousand guys uh, they're racing along with uh, ALMS at Road America, and this is going to be unique. This is going to be the first time that they're going to do a triple header. Uh, they'll have three races this weekend uh, there at Road America. So lots of opportunity to, uh, to tune in. Go to usf2000.com, click on the live timing and scoring, uh, listen to Rob call the races. He's absolutely brilliant. Uh, he's the American version of, uh, of Hindi. Incorrect. <laughs> yes, he is. He's there awesome. There is no such. He is. Book it. Nope. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's a phrase. Uh, but anyway, it it really is good stuff. And uh, you know, Star Mazda has the uh, the little lifetime and scoring. You can watch the numbers go by. Uh, but it, it's nice to have the actual audio feed sit there with in the chat room, uh, talking with other USF 2000 fans and uh, USF 2000 officials. Good, good stuff. Uh, another uh, another thirty. Uh, Thirty-card grid set for uh, for this uh, upcoming weekend, and I, I still don't see Timmy Meganbeer in the uh, in the entry list, and, and it's kind of unfortunate. He had he, he had such a great season last year. Um, he started off uh, this year with uh, a couple of nice finishes, uh, two sixth-place finishes. At uh, at Sebring, uh, didn't finish the uh, didn't finish at uh, the first race at uh, St. Pete, uh, but then had a, an eleventh at St. Pete and a top ten at uh, Luke's But he was a no show for Mid Ohio. I don't I don't know. Maybe he ran out of money, ran out of some other issues. It, it's unfortunate. Uh, but uh, Scott Hargrove is back. Uh, he uh, he had a decent Sebring, eleventh uh, in uh, in those two races, but uh, then did not uh, he did not finish. He DNF'd out of both of the St. Pete races, and I think that must have just consumed his money. Uh, but he's back with JDC Motorsports uh, here for the uh, for the Road America uh, trio of races. So that should be pretty cool. Um, with the championship stand. You know, uh, again, you know Spencer Piggott and Matthew Brabham, uh, they're kind of off fighting amongst themselves. Uh, that uh, they are they are miles ahead of uh, anybody else in the championship. Uh, it's, it's it's their championship to lose, and Spencer Piggott uh, has uh, has a, a, a eighteen point edge on Matty Brabs right now. So. Uh, but, I mean, three races this weekend, 19 or 18 points, that can change pretty easily. Uh, so we'll, we'll see what happens. Uh, it, it's definitely be capable uh, And that's all I got. What happened? <laughs> what happened? Where are we? Holy shit. Holy shit. I think it's 2014. No, <laughs> just kidding. I'm just kidding. Uh, all right. Well, Doug, thank you for the Monster and Indy um, segment. I'm sorry. I was only argu- I was on Facebook arguing with somebody between the differences of the B1 and the B2. So I I was listening to you. I was genuinely ish- interested in what you had to say. <laughs> <laughs> so. I am not lying. I try to keep up the Star Mazda and all that stuff as much as I can, and I do a terrible job. So thank you. Thank you for doing God's work and getting it out there. Oh, and then I should say, I nope. finally got the uh, the photos from Mid-Ohio posted. They're on the website. Uh, so head over to openpaddock.net. Uh, the first two posts right there, uh, one for all the sports car stuff, one for all the open wheel stuff. Uh, check them out. Uh, let me know what I'm doing wrong. Let me know what other photos that you'd like to see in the future. Sweet. All right. Well, that's all we have, but let's not uh, go too far because we have to tell you all the great action that's coming up here on ETV Live. Uh, we got lots of sim racing broadcasting going on. So, um, well, I – hold on a second. I have to look. 
I have to be sure because I think JD, the producer, is... Nah, here we go. I had the wrong week pulled up. So uh, looking ahead to what we have here at ETV Live for Sim Racing, broadca uh, Sim Racing Broadcasting, we have August 16th. We've got the, the Dirt Late Model Cars. Uh, it's a benefit for J Victory Junction Gang. Uh, Kyle Petty started uh, a... Uh, what do you call that? Charity, sorry. Uh, so we've got a guest announcer, Wesley Outland uh, from Fast Track Motorsports, going to be here. Uh, the race is sponsored by Maxed Out Motorsports, and it will be from Eldora Speedway. And we also have our usual Friday night showdown. So the Gary Mercer Trucking folks going to be bringing you action live at 8.15 Eastern at Talladega Motor Speedway. Austin Atkinson, David Booth, and friend Mike Conti will be in they're calling the action for that. All of that stuff starts with a pit report pre-race show on ETV Live Radio at 7.30 p.m. Always a fantastic time. That coming to you the 17th of August. And then tomorrow, for those of you who listen to the show, who have the Delaria IndyCar as well as Road America, you can catch me tomorrow, make my championship debut uh, for the SSCA IndyCar Championship. I'll be racing at Road America in the Slipstream Motorsports team, along with uh, with a friend of mine from there. So I've broadcast a number of time, number of times already. So uh, it's going to be great fun. Uh, please tune into ETV Live for all your sim broadcasting action. So it's a uh, it's going to be awesome. And all the racing here is top notch. So as far as sim racing broadcasting go, it doesn't get much better than ETV Live. And then we have next week on Tuesday before the show, if you choose to show up, we're going to have the showdown, the Tuesday showdown, where I hand JD his ass on a silver platter at Michigan International Speedway in the Dallara. But that will be televised here on ETV Live, uh, leading up to the podcast. It's kind of a supplemental uh, broadcast for everybody to watch. So, um, without anything else, you guys got anything for us, Mike, Doug? No. Nope. All right. Well, I want to say special thanks to these two gentlemen for joining me tonight, and we will be back next week, same bat time, same bat channel here on ETV Live for Open Paddock Radio. Thank you, and have a good night.